Hi, in the previous video I did a teardown of a 1986 vintage Scion 2 PDA and uh, on a quick scan of the board there were these black uh, marks on here across component pads and uh, at first glance I thought they were just um, a uh, no place marker for you know for not actually uh, placing the components on the board but um, several people pointed out that they're most likely um, carbon printed resistors directly on the board and uh, I think that's probably the case on second glance here. Now I sort of uh, casually uh, dismissed this uh, thought at the time uh, when I was briefly looking over the board uh, doing the teardown because it didn't really seem to make sense that you would carbon print resistors on here when you could have just placed a you know a cheap as chips they're almost free these resistors uh, placing they're so darn uh, cheap it just didn't seem to make sense because they weren't using um, carbon printing anywhere else on the board like for example the uh, buttons uh, which is a fairly uh, common technique you'll get uh, carbon printed on the um, button surfaces but they didn't do that so it would have been an extra step an extra cost in the manufacturing process to actually print these carbon resistors on here but you can see the physical it looks like they are because you can see the physical the thickness of these ones is much thicker than these ones here for example so they're obviously using a different value of resistance for these ones which are clearly uh, pull-ups or uh, pull down resistors there I'm not sure what uh, rail that is I haven't actually measured it yet but these ones are physically thinner and of course the resistance of these carbon these printed carbon tracks is going to depend um, upon the uh, length uh, the width and the surface area of these things and the uh, thickness of the coating of course they're actually um, quite variable these things they're typically like in the order of like 30 percent or so so they're they're very crude resistors uh, but good enough for uh, pull up and pull down resistors like this but these ones over here they've obviously got some other uh, pull ups or pull downs probably on this looks like something going into the uh, uh, the ROM devices here or somewhere under there but uh, they does look like they have printed on there so let's actually measure these things and see what we get now uh, you can't actually measure these uh, in circuit because you're not actually going to get a reliable reading but these pull down resistors here and they are pull down this side here is actually ground I've checked that and uh, these pull downs just go to these um, 0.1 inch expansion um, headers here so where I so they're not connected to anything else in circuit so we are actually able to measure the value of these things so let's get in there and let's do that and we can get in there and measure this individual pad there we go 65k 72k so there's already 76k there's already quite a significant 74 very significant spread on these values and we've got a few in a row there that are quite uh, quite close to each other but there you go those large thick ones up there in the corner they're you know around about that 75k value so these are actually carbon printed resistors now while it's not great to measure these other ones in circuit because they're going to active devices um, but at least we can get sort of you know um, a uh, a ballpark figure and this one down here for example is 213k so these are th physically thinner tracks and there you go it looks like they are a couple of hundred k and of course the voltage from the multimeter is uh, usually not um, high enough on the resistance range to turn on any active junctions within these devices here but you know it's <laughs> if you really want to get an accurate uh, reading you of course uh, should be getting in there and actually uh, breaking the PCB traces but of course uh, it, it can't uh, it's not going to give us a higher reading unless there's uh, uh, voltages present in the circuit and stuff like that so it's not a bad ballpark and they are all you know circa like 200k so they are effectively at least double 
those thicker resistor values there and that's exactly what you'd expect uh, just based on the size and shape of them. And if you have a close up view of these again, um, that's pretty much uh, precisely what you'd expect. You'd expect sort of these thinner ones to be, you know, roughly double the value of these thicker ones here. And uh, so they definitely are printed resistors. The million dollar question is why they've gone to the effort of doing that. Let's do a quick test here to see if we can modify the value of one of these resistors. I'll do the one on the end there, right on the very end. So it's uh, 65.2K and I'll get my knife out and let's uh, give it a bit of a uh, scrape here and see if we can change this value. Actually, what I'll do here is I'll show you something on the camera here. I've currently got this to um, auto uh, aperture and it's got an aperture value of f2.8 uh, on my lens here. I'm using my Opteca times 10 macro lens and you'll notice that uh, in here, right in the center is in focus and because my camera is at an angle like this, maybe a 60 degree angle or something, uh, up here, because it's a very low aperture value of uh, f2.8, you get blur in right at the back here. So back's not in focus, center's in focus, and this one's not. And now I've, uh, I haven't moved the camera and I've gone into aperture priority mode. Now I've set it to f4.8 and you can see it's gotten a bit better, but the image has gotten darker, of course, and a bit more grainy um, because of the relatively low light in here. And I'll increase that even further and uh, see if we can get it all in focus. And there you go, I've gone up to f8, and now you can see all of it is in focus right at the back and right at the front, but this is as high as it goes and it's very grainy, very dark. Um, that's just an interesting uh, effect of when you shoot things at an angle like this, if you're using a uh, low aperture value like that, and uh, you've got a good camera, um, things aren't in focus. Uh, the, you know, the end of the board um, and the front of the board is not in focus. And that's just an interesting uh, side effect of uh, shooting stuff like this. So anyway, I'll scrape away some of that. So what was it, 62.5K? So we'll scrape off, hopefully I won't, I shouldn't cut it. These are fairly rigid, fairly uh, solid things. So, but that will definitely, I'm sure that would have uh, changed the value. So let's measure it now. There you go, 74.5K. It's gone up very significantly. Chipped away a little bit more there. Let's see what we get now. Hey, there we go, 186K. Beauty. Now you've got to remember that this is 1986 we're talking about here, but uh, because of the date code, this one was actually manufactured in 1989, but we're still talking, you know, 23 years ago or greater. So, you know, um, just the pick and place uh, manufacturing technology and the cost of the individual uh, component resistors was much different back then. We, you know, it, it's a totally different world today, which is why you would essentially never ever see a carbon printed resistor like this in a bit of modern gear. Uh, you know, uh, actually in the last, well, I, I haven't seen these for like the last, oh, probably 15 years years maybe or something like that as a rough uh, ballpark that you can actually uh, do them in you know more exotic uh, products for various uh, exotic uh, and niche reasons but as far as a general purpose product goes it's just much cheaper to just place an, an 0805, 0603, 0402 resistor because they cost virtually nothing you know 0.0001 cents each or something like that when you're manufacturing hundreds of thousands of items like this they're practically free and the pick and place machines these days are so fast that really you know it's going to be cheaper to place a physical resistor than it is to do the carbon printing process on the PCB because a lot of uh, cost in a product will be bareboard PCB manufacturer especially if it's multi-layer and you know high density and all that sort of stuff so adding the extra step on there to you know imprint uh, to print those carbon resistors on there is um, 
you know, pretty much unheard of these days, but what were they thinking back in 1986 or 1989 here when they manufactured uh, this board? I presume they did it on the original board back in, the first board back in 1986 as well. So what were they thinking there? Were they, there would be a couple of reasons. One would be that the machine that they were using at whatever factory they were using to assemble these, the pick and place machine, didn't have enough uh, real spaces available for all the different types of components. But, um, you know, one of these pick and place machines might typically have, say, for example, uh, 50 uh, feeders, real feeders on it. And if you want to have a look at these things, you can uh, go have a look at my um, video of a typical, um, modern anyway, um, uh, PCB pick and place assembly line. And I'll paste the link in here for that if you want to take a look. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Um, so, you know, if you exceed that, uh, you know, that maximum number of reels of components, say you've got 50 different values of resistor on this board and 50 different values of caps, um, then you need that number of feeders to manufacture this board in a single pass. Um, and of course the machines these days, um, you know, they're double-sided, um, not double-sided uh, board, but uh, uh, double-sided is in, they have reels on both sides of the machines and they can have hundreds of uh, feeders or a hundred plus feeders on them. So really, but I don't remember. Back in 1986, I actually uh, wasn't, I, you know, that was a um, year or two before I actually started working in the industry. Um, I was still doing my uh, hobby stuff back then, but I certainly wasn't involved in the industry. So maybe somebody, a viewer out there, who was uh, in the PCB assembly uh, business back in 86 or 89 can actually uh, uh, clue us in on that. But anyway, that would be a reason um, for g uh, going for these carbon printed resistors. And they would have done it. The key reason would have been cost it would be cheaper to do that because there's no way you'll go to the effort to print these carbon resistors here and pay more for it because there's no advantage they're, they're just freaking pull down resistors that's all they are so um you know you don't care about the value so um let's look at the number of components on this board you know we're talking one two you know there's i assume that these are all the same value uh cap here and uh, so they only take one feeder each and there's only a couple of resistors on here you know, there's a couple of caps down there, but really, there's not that many. So, a um, couple up here. So, even if they're all different values, and of course, there's nothing uh, on the bottom. It's just the uh, 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 board itself. And you'll notice that these are gold-plated and not carbon-plated traces. So, it's not like you get those carbon-printed resistors for free. It's an expensive extra step. How expensive it was back in 86, I don't know. But you can bet your bottom dollar they did it because it was cheaper. And we've just got to figure out why. So really, um, they wouldn't have exceeded the number of feeders on there, even in a basic machine back in uh, 86, I'm sure. So maybe it was the physical speed of the machine and the price of the resistors themselves. Maybe they were much more expensive back then than they are now. You know, they practically give them away now. But back then, hey, maybe 0805 surface mount resistors cost, you know, a couple of cents each and they did and that takes x amount of machine time to actually place each one the head's got to go back it's got to fly back pick up the component move over boom drop it down if it's a multiple head one eh, it can do it a bit more efficiently pick up three five at a time or something like that and drop them in but it still takes time so there's that time machine assembly time cost there which you'll pick up uh, typically pay you know cost per minute or uh, something like that of the machine time plus the cost of the resistors. So, yeah, they've decided, well, it's going to be cheaper to carbon print these things. I wonder how much it would have cost them per bare board to get that those carbon resistors. And uh, in terms of the feeders, these um, uh, SO packages here, they may have came and come on uh, tapes and that maybe the small um, uh, quad flat pack here may have uh, come on tape, but these larger ones probably weren't on tape. They might have been in uh, trays or something like that. So they're a different part of the pick and place machine. But really, there's very few components on there. So I don't think it was... I, I'd be incredibly surprised if it was the limit of the feeders, um, uh, you know, and, and the requirement for a second pass through in that case. Now, I can't actually see 
uh, any penalization breakout marks on the side of this PCB here. Like there's no breakout tabs or anything. So I think this is a fully routed, um, a fully routed PCB. So they would have assembled this in like a custom holder as it went through the pick and place machine. So it's not like that they got, uh, so they probably assembled this one here differently. This one looks fully routed as well. So they probably assembled the two boards uh, differently as two different uh, processes. So it's not like they sort of, you know, panelized, uh, you know, the board like this and they put both boards through the pick and place machine at the same time rolling through like that. Gee, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly done as carbon printed resistors. So if you've got any uh, better uh, insight into that back in the uh, late, mid to late 80s, then uh, leave it in the comments or jump on over to the EEV blog forum. So I hope you found that uh, interesting. It's not something that you see very often these days, carbon printed resistors. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Catch you next time.